A woman in a ballerina pink suit leads a man into a dimly lit secret room. The man impatiently begins to unbutton. The woman also turns around and takes a handcuff. The man says this is fun. He then enjoys himself very much and lies down and waits quietly for the woman to bind his legs. Everything is ready, but the woman opened the curtains. Although he asked to close the curtains because he doesn't like to be seen. But the woman ignores his request. She presses the switch and hands the man high in the air. The crowd of onlookers outside the house grows. They started to raise their voices and begin to talk about him. The man was ashamed of himself in full view of everyone. He begged her to let him go and said he had a wife and child. The woman then pointed her finger out of the room. It was his wife who was standing at the end of the crowd, but the look in his wife's eyes did not seem disappointed. The next moment, the woman cut open the man's stomach in front of everyone. The crowd outside the house exclaimed with excitement that the show was too real. They had no idea that this was a real murder. The killer was the same Villanelle, and the person who hired her was his wife, who did not accept being betrayed by a man. Villanelle wants to get investigator Eve's attention again with this high-profile murder, because Eve was recently investigating another killer. This makes her jealous. Villanelle sends a postcard to Eve, in the most original and romantic way. She hopes that her dear Eve will not forget her. After the murder she went back to the small hotel across the street. Villanelle paid the money just to wait quietly by the window for Eve's arrival. But a whole day passed and the investigator, who finally appeared was a stranger. This certainly made her feel deeply betrayed. But in fact, it was all a sabotage by Eve's leader. She deliberately hid the postcard sent by Villanelle. Because Eve is now investigating another killer code named Ghost. In the past period of time, people around Peel, a wealthy businessman had been killed in accidents disguised as accidents. Eve's analysis of the modus operandi suggests that the ghost is a medical professional and a woman over 35 years old. She may have suffered some changes in recent years. He followed the clues and finally identified the suspect and he was caught. But the ghost no matter how to face the questioning always shut up. And when Eve learned that Villanelle was a fearsome presence in the world of female assassins, Eve then had a bold idea. Ever since Villanelle and Constantine left the Twelve, they've been working together. But that day, Villanelle received a special assignment. Villanelle's new assassination target was Eve. This was also Eve's plan. Her goal was to get Villanelle to show up and help her interrogate the ghost. Of course Villanelle doesn't want to accept the assignment, but Constantine had to get her to kill Eve. Because Eve has now made Villanelle weak, Villanelle stood frowning in place. Eve's press did change her a lot. However, that night Eve received a white rose on her doorstep. She knew it was Villanelle who was coming to kill her. She couldn't help but become excited. The assassin wrapped her arms around Eve's waist. The knife was pressed against Eve's chest. She asked Eve if she would give her everything she wanted. A quarter of an hour ago, Villanelle had been tasked with killing Eve. Since the last time Eve stabbed Villanelle in Paris, it was the first time the two had come face to face. It was a moment Villanelle had been waiting for for a long time. But Eve wasn't surprised, because Villanelle had hired herself. Eve had asked her for help, and was sure Villanelle wouldn't kill herself. But instead, Villanelle pulls out the champagne she brought, and the pills she'd already prepared on the table. Eve is also sure of her judgment. She actually took the pills and swallowed them. This terrified Villanelle. She didn't think Eve would really take this pill, because this is arsenic. So she urgently asked Eve to spit out the pill. Eve was so scared that she immediately ran to the sink to induce vomiting. But then Villanelle behind her burst out laughing. She laughed at Eve for being so gullible. That joke is over. Villanelle agreed to Eve's request after negotiating the terms. At the crack of dawn, Eve took Villanelle to the forest and stopped in front of a large container. Inside the container, the killer codenamed Ghost was being held. But Villanelle, known as the devil, managed to get the answer from the ghost in less than 10 minutes. It turned out that the person who hired her to kill Peel was Peel's son Aaron. What Aaron wanted to sell was not the company. It was a weapon that everyone, including the Twelve, wanted. As she investigates Aaron more closely, Carolyn discovered that he was a paranoid man. He's psychotic and extremely vigilant. MI5 is forced to call in Villanelle again to investigate such a difficult subject. And the two of them become partners again. Eve dresses Villanelle as a delinquent. First she goes to AA and approaches Aaron's sister Annie. Seeing Villanelle's flamboyant acting doesn't win the trust of everyone. Eve is also very angry because she had told Villanelle. The first rule of AA is honesty. Her tough, cold tone made Villanelle uncomfortable. She told Eve I like you but I don't like you that much. But by the next day, Villanelle heeded her advice. She injected a bit of emotion into her performance. This finally moved Annie to listen to her. 
The two of them were soon talking after the session. However, Annie was accompanied by an annoying secretary sent by her brother. Aaron won't allow Annie to connect with anyone. Villanelle wouldn't allow someone like that to get in her way. So she pushes the secretary into the road in front of Eve and watches the cars drive by. Villanelle finally made a connection with Annie. And because of her work, her contact with Eve became more and more frequent. Villanelle thought Eve might be lonely. Soon Villanelle received an invitation to dinner. And she finally met her target, Aaron. But Aaron is extremely wary of strangers. Villanelle's new character faked a double degree in philosophy and art. But she's too lazy to memorize the information. So she's exposed by Aaron in a few words. But she'll work it out her own way. Bila now solves bully in her own way, but it was this unexpected move that sparked Aaron's interest in Villanelle. He invites her to join him in Rome for a conference. Villanelle says she won't sleep with him. Aaron also said he would never touch her. The hit woman picks up her sexy lace pajamas. She looked at the closet full of designer labels and a bed full of clothes, shoes and bags and felt great satisfaction. But the man in the room next to hers is watching all of this through a pinhole camera. Villanelle gets dressed and comes out. But the paranoid Aaron is not satisfied with her outfit and tells her to take off her belt. Aaron's forceful tone of voice made Villanelle unable to resist. She had to take off her belt. But Aaron's next request was even more outrageous. Villanelle leaned against the couch in silence, like a painting. She seemed to be giving the man great satisfaction. Aaron told Villanelle to stay still and wait for him to return. That night Aaron finally took Villanelle with him to talk business. He lowers his offer without any bottom line. When he didn't accept his price, he revealed the intimate relationship between the two men across the table. Apparently Aaron had a good grasp of the other side's dark information. So Aaron's ultimate weapon for sale was information. Eve on the other end of the wiretap also had this important information. Aaron has the means to get all the information, but he didn't know Villanelle's true identity. So she's fueled his desire to explore and conquer. The relationship between the two seemed to get a little closer. Early the next morning, Aaron introduces Villanelle to a new potential client for the day. However, the person in front of the screen is the same person that the 12th sent to kill Villanelle's contact. So she says the safe word, Eve, who was listening in, realized that Villanelle was in danger. So she immediately changed into her waitress outfit and rushed him. Aaron immediately recognized who Eve was who had investigated him. But he seemed a little surprised that Villanelle and Eve knew each other. But the smart Aaron soon figured out the connection. Since he recognized Villanelle very much, he felt that they belonged to the same group of people. So he wanted to bring Villanelle into the group and get her out of her boring life. He promised Villanelle that he would give her everything. If Villanelle cues Eve now, Aaron said his promise would take effect immediately. Villanelle is curious and asks if he wants to see the murder scene. However, the next moment Villanelle came up behind him with a knife. She made Aaron fall to his knees in front of Eve. This would show Eve how strong her feelings for him were. Villanelle escapes from the hotel with Eve. But at this moment Eve remembers that the wiretap data is still at the hotel. She had to risk returning to the hotel. And Villanelle certainly doesn't leave her clothes behind. She and Eve agreed to meet in front of the hotel in five minutes. However, when Eve returns to the hotel, her room was cleaned up. But luckily it was Carolyn. The leader, who did it, but Caroline wasn't surprised to hear that Villanelle had killed Aaron. It seems that was her original plan. Caroline used Villanelle's hand to kill Aaron in the name of the Twelve. Eve realizes just how scheming her leader is. Instead of leaving with Caroline, she stayed behind and waited for Villanelle. And Villanelle met the employee who came to kill her in the hotel lobby. That to fight instantly, Villanelle is a little less strong. She is pinned against the wall and choked by the man. But then Eve slowly approaches behind him with her axe in the air. Eve saw that Villanelle was about to be choked to death by him. She finally broke through and cut the man again and again with her own hands. Villanelle struggled to calm Eve down. She took the helpless Eve away from the place. They went through a secret passage and came to a very Roman-style building. The warmth of the sun shone on them. Villanelle plans to think of a future for them. They could live a normal life without being disturbed. But then Eve notices the gun in Villanelle's hand. She realizes that Villanelle could have just shot the man. Instead, Villanelle spurred Eve on to cut the man down. Just because Villanelle wanted to make them both become the same person. Villanelle also always thought that Eve was the same as her inside. But Eve couldn't accept it. Her life, which had been peaceful, was now in chaos. She even became a murderer. Villanelle said she loved Eve but was rejected. She yelled in anger that you're mine. She thought Eve was special. After some thought, 
Villanelle raises her gun and shoots. This is the end of Killing Eve Season 2. This season is full of Villanelle and Eve's tug of war. They both try to draw each other into their worlds. Eve believes that Villanelle can't be healed. Villanelle, on the other hand, wants Eve to be the same as she is at heart. Eve stabbed Villanelle at the end of the first season. Perhaps Eve was overwhelmed with love. And maybe the shot at the end of this season was Villanelle's heartbreaking disappointment. One of them fell in a pool of blood, and the other left with a broken heart. In the end, it can only be a lose-lose situation. This is Rainbow Movie. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.